Air pollution in India is emerging out as a very, very important issue. Almost 6 lakh people are dying annually just because of ambient air pollution in India. India is losing almost 36% of its wheat just because of very high ozone levels. Terry has done a number of studies to project the future of air quality in Indian scenarios. What we have found is if you don't do anything about it, in a business as usual scenario, the air quality is going to get worsened. The air pollution levels will go even higher than what we uh, observe them today. We can classify air pollutants uh, in two broad categories, particulates and uh, gaseous pollutants. Uh, in particulates, uh, you know, you can uh, further classify them into different uh, size fractions. So you have uh, coarser particles, you have fine particles. Now, uh, fine is the part, finer is the particle, it can go deeper into your lungs and that is more deadly and it can cause uh, more harm to a human body than a coarser particle. Gaseous pollutants other than the health impacts can cause impacts over buildings. A pollutant gas like ozone, which is formed by secondary reactions, can also cause impacts over agricultural productivity. Many of these uh, pollutants are also having impacts over climate at the global uh, scale. So, you know, in all, all these pollutants are really harmful for human society all at uh, local, regional and global scales. At a city scale, they, they basically impact human health. At a regional scale, they impact agricultural productivity. At global scale, basically they impact climate. At the moment, the Indo-Gangetic Plain, which is the most fertile land in India and having the highest uh, agricultural productivity, is under very high ozone levels. And in, in future, the area under the violation of ozone will be you know, widened and you will have higher losses of agri agricultural productivity because of ozone if nothing is done about it. And, and uh, uh, we need to do, take so many actions to basically take an alternative path so that ozone and PM2.5 levels are reduced. PM particles are almost in invisible to human eyes. If you compare it with the size of human hair, human hair is around 70 micrometers. And we are talking about particles which are of the size of 10 micrometers or less. That means the particles are almost invisible to our human eyes and they can go really deep into our respiratory system and cause human damage. At the national scale, residential sector, biomass cooking happening in Indian kitchens and industrial sector are the two major contributors to the problem of uh, air pollution. But when you move your focus from national to city scale, transport has a major role to play. That means at the national scale, we need to control emissions of industries and residential biomass cooking. And at the city scale, transport sector has to be controlled immensely if you, if you uh, want to have uh, better air quality at all places in the country. People need to travel a lot. Uh, the cities are sprawling. The mobility demands have gone uh, very high. Uh, with this, people are looking for options to move. If public transportation, an efficient one, a reliable one, a safe one is not available, in that case, people will move to private vehicle uh, as an alternative. So if we want to curtail the growth of private vehicles, the public transportation needs to be improved immensely. Uh, there are efforts made by the government to reduce private vehicle ownership and usage. And uh, there was a recent uh, implementation of Audiman scheme in Delhi, which tried to control the use of private cars on the roads and tried to enhance carpooling to reduce congestion, to re reduce pollution. However, the impacts were uh, not very, very huge. Uh, the congestion levels saw some sort of a dip, but pollution levels were marginally reduced because the overall share of private cars in the inventory is not very huge. And uh, you need so many other measures to basically reduce air pollution in a city like Delhi.
we need to have best technology and best fuel quality for vehicles. We need to have the best public transport system, which is reliable, which is safe. We need to promote electric mobility in India through uh, expansion of infrastructure and expansion of subsidies. We need to promote improved cook stoves to get rid of residential biomass burning and to reduce emissions indoors and outdoors. We also need to reduce emissions from the construction sites by uh, enforcing environmental management plans. We also need to reduce road dust resuspension by improving the quality of roads and also by maintaining and cleaning them at a regular basis. Individuals have a major role to play in uh, combating the problem of air pollution. The approach is avoid, shift and improve. The first thing is avoid. Can we really avoid uh, a certain activity, an energy use or a product which we can really avoid in our real life? So if, if I just have to paint my house, I cannot avoid it, can I shift to low VOC paints? So that's the solution. If you cannot avoid, if you cannot shift, can you really improve? Can you improve the technology of the thing you are ultimately going to use? So if you cannot avoid a trip, if you cannot shift to public transport, can you use a car which is the most fuel efficient and environmental friendly in the market? It is time that we combat this problem. It is time that we save our own people and save the agricultural productivity so that it helps the economy of the nation. It needs collective efforts from government, from academia, from NGOs and from individuals so that this problem can be solved and country uh, progresses on the right path.